Hey, everybody, welcome to CHCH Live at 530. I'm Mark Hebsher. And I'm Donna Skelly. Now, Mark, a battle is brewing in your hometown over a leash-free park. Donna, I love dogs, but just like fences make good neighbors, leashes make good pets. When they're run properly, these dog parks can be enjoyed by both puppy and master, and we'll discuss it on Square Off. Here's a news flash. Random tests show marijuana is the drug of choice in the military. Urine samples showed that almost one in 20 members of the Army, Navy, and Air Force used some form of cannabis. Oddly enough, that information comes to light just a couple of days after the Prime Minister snuffed out any hope that his government might one day legalize the demon weed. Now, in answering one of a dozen questions in his first ever virtual town hall meeting on YouTube, Stephen Harper said his government will not legalize pot. The Prime Minister said, and I quote, the reason drugs are illegal is because they're bad. He said when people buy from the drug trade, they're buying from international cartels that are involved in unimaginable violence. And Harper clearly stated he doesn't share the view that marijuana is an essentially harmless homegrown drug that should be legally sold and taxed as alcohol is. Joining us now in Ottawa, we have conservative strategist and blogger Stephen Taylor. And here in studio, Michael Baldessero, an outspoken marijuana advocate. Michael, until there's a definite, a definitive long-term double-blind study that shows marijuana is completely harmless, mm. how then could any government legalize it now? Well, the government doesn't want to legalize it. How many times have I, do I have to keep on saying Justice McCart of the Superior Court in London said marijuana was less harmful than alcohol and tobacco? I mean, I've been waiting since Pierre Trudeau almost encouraged me to smoke marijuana by saying it was going to be legal and all these years later this government of Canada that won't accept the challenge and when the lawyers should do that on our behalf people it's less harmful than alcohol and tobacco so uh, what can I say I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted and, and and hurt by his his assumption that people that smoke marijuana might be bad people the only harm done by marijuana is, is the police dragging people off and throwing them in jails with people who are criminally belong there. Okay, I just want to clarify. I don't think he said that people are bad people. He just said it was bad. But, Stephen, I want to ask you, how long can the government continue to just spend millions and millions of dollars fighting marijuana use when so many people use it for recreation and as a medicinal tool? Well, I would say it fits into a much broader context. We can't just look at it as a an issue of personal freedom. I have in the past advocated personally, I'm not uh, taking position of a uh, party that I support, that I do think that it should be uh, decriminalized uh, for personal use. However, I do think that we must consider it within a broader context of, of law enforcement, how it fits into with organized crime, uh, what sort of an upheaval of uh, the current prohibition would cause uh, in law uh, a law enforcement uh, uh, larger framework. So I don't think it's as simple as uh, our other guest uh, would suggest. And I think that he says that it's it's uh, he measures it on a spectrum of harm as compared to alcohol. I don't think that he would say that it isn't harmful to people. I wouldn't advocate that people smoke marijuana. I just don't think that uh, this is something that the government is. Uh, uh, I don't think it's uh, an ad agenda that they want to address right now, and I don't think it's uh, an agenda that Canadians want the government to address mm -hmm. right now. I think there are much more important things for this government to uh, be addressing. Michael, yeah. Michael, do you think that, um, I mean, here we mentioned off the top, uh, uh, one in 20, about 5% of those in the military uh, have used cannabis of some form. I would think up on Parliament Hill the ratio might be higher. I don't know, maybe in the, in the entertainment business it's probably higher than that. Do you think the average person doesn't realize how many and what percentage of people uh, use marijuana? Everything from uh, professionals, lawyers, doctors, airline pilots. I don't know that it's, it's much more prevalent than the average person might think. It's the government just simply being reluctant. They have no proof that marijuana, like the only evidence they have is it's less harmful than alcohol and tobacco. How can they stretch that? And Donna, they're saying we're bad. They're, <laughs> they've got me in there with, all with, with crack cocaine and everything else. There is a war in this country but, on but, drugs, but Michael, on answer. people like me. There's a war. They I dragged know, me but, off to prison. I know, but Michael, let's, uh, let's uh, answer Mark's question. That is, do you think that the average Canadian is unaware of the number of people who do smoke pot? And the number or the types of people that it's become more common around just about every profession, 
Every walk of life? Well, of course. I, 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 you know, the Army and during the Vietnam War is famous for guys smoking marijuana, flying helicopters, and listening to rock and roll music, encouraging a culture that they feed on. They, they've got two wars in the United States, but the one at home they don't talk about is the one on the American and the Canadian system for citizens. Do you citizen, believe that what? it's harmful? For Do having, you believe that it's harmful? It's not harmful. Justice McCart said it wasn't. Uh, he, he spent, but, well, yeah, but, but, Michael, until there are studies done, uh, no, no, no. We're not sure of the long-term effects especially. Well, wait a minute. You can't make laws on maybe something might be bad for you. We know nobody's ever died from it. If you want to make laws on, on, on evidence, look at tobacco and alcohol for crying out mm -hmm. loud. And Stephen, it's true, if we're going to make the comparison between two legal substances in this country uh, and go back to when there was prohibition and the problems that caused with organized crime, he does make a good point. Yeah, but what we're seeing now is, uh, especially on the West Coast, uh, with regards to law enforcement, with regards to the marijuana trade, with regards to uh, trade of uh, uh, more dangerous uh, drugs, we're seeing that it isn't, like the Prime Minister said, it isn't like your neighborhood, um, your neighbor that's uh, growing it in his, um, in his uh, bathroom window that's uh, selling you the marijuana. It's part of a larger distribution network that ruins entire societies. And and uh, like, he, like, like he said, nobody's ever regretted not getting into a drug uh, lifestyle, but I don't think, uh, I, I, I just don't think your other guest is being honest when he says that there is no harm. And uh, I, I, think we, we should, no I think harm. we should, I think we should put out the message that uh, um, nobody should advocate that others uh, take up marijuana. Okay, Stephen, I just want to ask you real quickly. Do you think there's yeah. a bit of hypocrisy involved? I mean, we, there, there have to be members of parliament and, and people within the bureaucracy of parliament that smoke pot. Oh yeah, I, I think there are uh, a significant number. I think that if we look at historical use of marijuana uh, by members of parliament, uh, you'd be surprised to find it probably greater than 5% uh, like you uh, stated for the military. Well, and, that's... And, and hang on a second, and Stephen, would you say that uh, if there is a significant number, if it was to be put to a, a vote, hmm. do you think that, uh, that on Parliament Hill the, the vote might be closer than we might think? I think that uh, you'll find that uh, conservative MPs are representing the wishes of their constituents and a lot of their constituents are saying that they want, uh, as, as the current framework exists, they want safer streets, they want safer society, they don't want this criminal element coming into their neighborhoods uh, to, uh, to really taint uh, the sort of order that, that exists uh, and within if this the was, community. If this was legalized and controlled, would that not eliminate most of the criminal element? Well, I think that's more of a philosophical question at this point. Well, wait a I second. Think, we discussed I, no, this no, with, I, with I, alcohol, no, I though. Think, I think to implement that uh, would be uh, something that would require a lot more than uh, two minutes of, of discussion. Well, what, what, uh, then what, what was done back, uh, back after Prohibition when it was decided to eliminate Prohibition and allow uh, 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 alcohol to be controlled and regulated by the government? They didn't yeah. talk. What did they do? Talk for a couple minutes and say, okay, let's legalize it? <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that that necessarily would be uh, a bad thing to discuss. I think that it is uh, something that should be part of the broader debate. I just think that uh, we must recognize that there are a number of people that um, would suggest that uh, as part of a broader um, community strategy that this is not something that they want to see in their communities and this is not something that they want to see mixing in with their kids. If it was legal, uh, do, you, do you think that uh, if, if you could go to the corner store and buy marijuana and, it, and you had to be an adult, I think that there would be more use among children uh, than if it, if it was illegal and like was being bad and, and at least taught uh, by their parents that it was a bad thing to do. Michael, what were you saying? Like, like alcohol and tobacco. The kids smoke, the kids drink. These are pretty flimsy excuses for keeping something that's beneficial to mankind illegal simply because the politicians I'm are sorry, afraid it's they're not, not going to get a vote. It's not beneficial to mankind. Sure it's a it is. Uh, uh, it's Mona a Lisa was probably painted on hemp oil. It people's lives. The people's lives. It saves lives. It's used in medicine. It's never killed anybody. You, uh, I, don't, I don't think it makes people very productive. You have a law that's, based that's, that's on not necessarily Excuse me a, for a second. Hang on, hang on, you went on for five minutes, policy sir. policy perspective. That's a personal choice. But I don't think it's, it's something that uh, uh, is on the agenda for, it, in a public policy sense no, at the moment. You're right. It's a personal choice. I choose to use go? it in my life. And marijuana laws are not criminal. They're not in the criminal code. I've been in prison for selling it. I don't have a criminal record. It's under, the, it's under food and drugs, for crying out loud. Okay. Criminal.
We got to run. Michael Baldessaro, yeah. Stephen Taylor, uh, thanks for a very lively and informative uh, debate on this subject. Appreciate your Bless time. You. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks.